you have arrived at my end of the year, super duper awesome flagship comparison, multi-pass multi multi extravaganza. No need to pinch yourself, it's really happening. To qualify, and I'm talking to you, consumer electronics, home theater systems, you need to have that little something something, something particularly appealing, elite attributes that make you a standout, and rear speakers. My top four contenders, the Nakamichi Dragon, the Samsung Q990C, the Sonos Arc with two Aero 300s and a Sonos Sub, and the enigmatic Sony HTA9 with the SW5 wireless subwoofer. I bought all of these with my money. I dare you to find another reviewer that dumb. Last year's comparison video came in just short of 70 minutes after cutting about 40 minutes of top-notch soundbar zingers. Apparently, that is the longest soundbar video ever made, which I feel like you only need to do once. So this year, instead of doing something close to four full reviews, I'm gonna give you some strong and weak points for each system, giving you the flavor of the hardware features and limitations before dedicating the remaining time to sound comparisons, which for whatever reason seems to be what interests y'all the most about audio systems. If you're the give me every little yummy yummy detail hungry hippo type, there are many videos I have published you can wade through that reference, review, and compare these systems in some form or another. You'll never want another detail ever again. Links in the description. This video, however, is the only review out there as of now, I think, that compares these four high profile systems. It's always on me to push the boundaries of soundbar reviews. Let's jump in, the Nakamichi Dragon, the good stuff. It boasts the most channels and drivers of any soundbar system known to humans. I don't know what the aliens are up to. It's the only soundbar system with air motion transformer tweeters, which are higher end than your typical soundbar tweeter by a wide margin. It has a fully functional HDMI 2.1 eARC port with three 2.1 compatible HDMI inputs. You often don't get the full 2.1 support and very rarely get three inputs. So a big win, particularly for gamers that want to plug directly into the bar. DTSX Pro, so the ability to spread the metadata to all of the Dragon's 21 channels. The more fuzzy capability is whether the Dragon can distribute Atmos metadata to more than 7.1.4 channels. So Atmos Pro if Dolby wanted to market it in that way, which they don't. Yes, the Dragon has the processor to handle 24.1.10 channels. How do I know this? You're just gonna have to trust me and my trustworthy face. Access to all channel levels, including calibration aids, along with the low frequency effects crossover point. A demo button. It lets you cool kid one press, give your friends and family the face melt. I need to issue a correction from my previous Dragon video. My producer, that doesn't exist, let me get this wrong. The front display can go away with this setting in the on-screen display. Almost forgot the on-screen display where you can make any sound adjustment. Uh, it's quite the thing. The not so great. The build, in particular the main unit metal casing, robustness wise, does not meet the price tag. I know Nakamichi bragged about how difficult it was to machine and mold the metal casing. Kudos, I suppose, but it's very thin and malleable, making it susceptible to damage during shipping, which, anyway. Nakamichi has taken steps to reduce the chances of such an occurrence with more stickers and this acrylic board that was shipped in the same box as my third and only undamaged main unit. From the comments I've received, it sounds like getting replacements for damaged components, if you don't beauty pageant your dragon around on the internet, can take a long time perhaps months, which has led to some very angry comments directed at me. Innocent little old me. Can you even imagine? The price is extreme for a soundbar kit, which is almost certainly your reference point, not a high-end AVR system. Though, good try, Nakamichi. There is no auto room calibration feature, which seems to be near standard on much cheaper and less complicated soundbar systems. Zero network connectivity, so no AirPlay, Chromecast, connected services, 
local network playback, or over-the-air firmware updates. You can kind of sideload the internet by connecting a streamer to either the optical or aux import. And the Dragon is all very new, unprecedented, and long-term untested, so it's not clear how the coils and various parts hold up past the year warranty, which should raise the blood pressure a bit when clicking the $4,000 purchase button. The Q990C, the good. The price, I think many can find this for about 1,000, often less in particular if you're not in the States. This is about half the price of the HTA9 bundle, which is the closest system in price. So you're getting of the people price for elite soundbar system sound. This is a thermonuclear weapon Samsung wields against its competition. Two HDMI inputs, so two surefire slots to get lossless audio to the bar from, for example, your Blu-ray player, Apple TV, and gaming consoles. It's always safest to plug directly into the bar for the best sound, and a must if your TV does not support eARC. Q Symphony, bringing Samsung-compatible TV speakers into the system's mix. I have somewhat lukewarm feelings about this feature, but all the comments I get and see suggest customers really like it and report improved 3D audio effects when it's active. All of y'all's combined judgment is probably better than mine. Moving on, a whole endless breadstick basket of AI sound improvers. And the improvements are made over time, adjusting to changing room acoustics, and in real time, based on content. All of these tools really taking the tuning burden off the customer allowing you to sit with the peace of mind that what you're hearing is near as good as the system can sound in your space and with your content. Wireless 3D audio. If you don't have a good plan for hiding your HDMI cable, you can connect the bar wirelessly to compatible Samsung TVs and preserve the ability to play Atmos and DTSX. Though, as you might expect, this does deactivate the HDMI inputs. The bad. The two inputs are not 2.1 enabled, so you can only pass 4K up to 60 Hertz. The rears have a reputation of cutting out. It's never really been bad enough for me to notice all that much, but it is something many of you have complained about through the Q900 series and something you may encounter. You are limited to one sub and the one is not all that big at eight inches. Salt in the Wound, the C's cousin, the JBL 1300X, does offer a 12-inch sub. The ARC system, the good. The ecosystem. You can build an organism as opposed to collecting a bunch of one-offs. So mix and matching and repurposing components and building as your budget allows. You have access to many integrated music services, which offer direct connections to streamer servers with a select few offering high-res and spatial audio. Keep in mind, using integrated services keeps your phone audio open so you can take a call or watch a video without disrupting the audio playing through the Sonos speakers. Sonos offers very professional and high-quality component builds. Sonos is also the usability winner. This system is most likely to disappear and become a seamless extension to the TV. The most comprehensive multi-room support. It's not even close. The best lifetime software support. Expect more enhancements to your product over its lifetime than other systems. Because the Dragon is so singular, maybe it will receive a similar level of attention. The option to add a second sub, which is a big deal if you're serious about all of this. The bad, no inputs, so no way to guarantee lossless audio. No dedicated remote may be a major annoyance if you're frequently adjusting settings beyond volume. An iPhone is required for room tuning. Sonos told me to pass this message along. If you don't have at least one Apple friend who is willing to help you, maybe the problem is you. That's a really rude message from Sonos. Definitely from Sonos. The ARC system is pricey, usually falling between $22 and $2,500. Well less than the Dragon, but 
well more than the vast majority of the competition. The ARC may very well be replaced, eclipsed, or made less relevant in 2024, according to this guy. Watch my previous video for more details. And finally, no lossless DTS support, including the 3D audio variant, DTSX. The HTA9, the good, a truly wide front soundstage. That might be the best thing so far. It's 360 spatial sound mapping, which adapts to your component's placement constraints. I will attest that the room mapping works quite well. None of the components need to be placed right in front of your TV. It supports HDMI 2.1 as an input. It also supports LDAC lossless Bluetooth streaming, though that's not compatible with iOS. The bad, no center channel speaker is a common complaint. The HTA9 by far has the lowest channel and driver count of the bunch, so fewer soldiers to fortify your sound world. The control box only has one input, which I appreciate it's better than nothing, but has me plugging and unplugging my Apple TV and Blu-ray player far too frequently. Audio cutouts are a known issue and this system does not absorb those cutouts well. Though of late, the cutouts do seem to have largely gone away, perhaps due to the latest software upgrade 1.779. Nonetheless, if you suffer from cutouts, don't say I didn't warn you. And finally, you can't add a second sub. Okay, the sound comparison. I want to preface this by saying all these systems sound really good, and I would be more than happy with any one of them if stuck on a desert island. I wouldn't put a system in this comparison that does not meet that criteria. Just gonna put it out there. In terms of overall sound, the Dragon is the most impressive. It brings the most heat throughout the frequency range, besting the competition in clarity, fill, structure, and distortion, all while still stretching. A ton of overhead with the Dragon. This is what you're paying for. But this does not mean that the Dragon is the best at all the different sound aspects, or even if the prices were equal, that it would be the best system for you. So having put my Dragon cards down, I'm gonna go through the ups and downs of the other three systems, often using the Dragon as a reference point. Through this process, you should get a pretty good sense of where I stand on all four systems. Starting with the HTA9, why not? The good stuff. One commenter said he went through a bunch of my videos and landed on the A9 because it has something like an X factor. I think this is the right way to conceptualize the A9. It has a manner of presenting audio that soundbar systems simply cannot recreate. What the HTA9 does particularly well is offer up a clean canvas or wide open uncluttered room that gives the audio elements space to breathe. This system does the best job of isolating the clanks and gunshots, punches, voices, glass breaks, and so on. And quite frankly, a lot of this has nothing to do with cool code names and icons, but the plain cold hard fact that the front speakers span a wider distance than any soundbar could dream. A 15 foot wide soundbar would be a dreadful shipping burden and your lady would make many unhelpful comments. Other advantages, a heavy dose of atmospherics. You can catch a ton of environmental noises. And again, they are more spatially convincing in this bigger, more symmetric sound space. To make this plain, if you're seeking above all, the cleanest, most precise audio from a spatial perspective, go with the A9 with confidence. It's still special in that way, even at the end of 2023. So what are you giving up relative to the Dragon and the other two contenders to a lesser degree? It's quite obvious, body. You really don't get anything approaching the high calorie middle you get from the Dragon. The cuts are near as sharp, but the gut punches nowhere near as violent or impactful. The sound is lighter, more safe. It's fun and stimulating. It's a delightful bubbly beverage you millennials made so popular. One aspect that strikes me as kind of funny is the amount of talk the Dragon subs are getting. 
I'll admit, compared to a traditional system you could put together amongst thousands of choices, the Dragon's subs would not be standouts. But the Dragon's base presence relative to the A9's is night and day. The A9's base performance falls much closer to the other two systems. I think those who are bothered by too much bass are generally do not think bass is an issue in soundbar systems they've heard. Well, the A9 would be a good match. But for those that are about the Dragon subs, this system would set you off on a tailspin. Dialogue. I'm satisfied with it. As I've mentioned in previous videos when immersed in a scene, I perceive voices emanating from the middle of the screen. For those that are particularly concerned about dialogue and want it coming literally from below and middle of the TV, obviously this system doesn't do that. You can use the S center speaker out feature in a compatible Sony TV that uses the TV speakers as a center channel. Be mindful, it's adding a speaker of a different tenor and quality. I think it sticks out a bit and is unnecessary, but a center channel option nonetheless, if that is a point of concern for you. The Samsung Q990C. You know, the Q990C bar is big for a sound bar, but when put up against the Dragon, it looks so cute. I mean, you guys. Nonetheless, I fire it up and I am immediately reminded how capable it is. The sound is very precise, detailed, and satisfying. It just oozes value and competence. It's hard to not just shut this video down and say if you're in the market for a soundbar system and you want the best wow per dollar, go get the Q990C, happily ever after. However, in the context of this evaluation, the Q990C sound-wise is let's just say completely overshadowed by the Dragon. Dragon Light, the Q990C is. The C advantage may be the sound comes across perhaps more expertly machined, maybe with a pinch more precision. You know, the sound is kind of the super smart kid conceived by like 25 smart parents doing things with each other. I'm not a biologist, but you know, Samsung has purchased a lot of audio smarts. Otherwise, the Dragon is just more. One of the biggest advantages are the higher-end AMT tweeters. They do offer an unmistakable elevation in quality, definition, and shape of the top effects. The C, unfortunately, does not render the same level of definition. The Q990C middle comes across as more constrained and less expressive than the Dragon. It's a tighter sound, but more exclusionary. Less detail gets through. I never heard it before listening to the Dragon, but the C can sound a bit squeezed. The 3D effects are not as pronounced as in the Dragon. I think it has a lot to do with the lower quality tweeters, fewer and generally smaller drivers. And to the C's credit, I tend to think Samsung is less willing than most to DSP the sound into oblivion to eke out more 3D audio performance. And to be fair, I've never stated that the Q990C is a tippity top 3D audio contender. It's good, you will notice plenty of 3D effects. It's just not exceptional, particularly in this lineup. The bass, I think the Q990C bass unit is sufficient. Many disagree with me. I find it's mostly proportional to the soundbar sound. It affords you a tight and very noticeable foundation, but it certainly stops short of earth core deep. Where the Dragon subs, even though they do not seem to be as exciting as the fanboys were hoping, goes much further down and offers much better spatial coverage. The bass is far more localized on the Q990C. The very interesting, somewhat confused arc system. Don't get it twisted. There are all kinds of reasons to get a Sonos product and the Arc specifically. But the Arc and just talking about the bar in terms of its bad boy cinema machine cred is two steps below the Dragon and a significant step below the Q990C bar. It's just a smaller, less articulated, more petite sound that is still better than the vast majority of soundbars. 
This mid-2020 bar is in this competition really for one reason. It's the best bar compatible with the ERA 300s. The ERA 300s were built primarily for playing spatial music. You can do it with just one, but it's even more fun with two. But, and perhaps by mistake, these are so much more exciting as cinema enhancers. They just bring so much energy, vigor, low end, and spatial effects to the mix that the Sonos ones were not. And the sound quality is at an elite level for a soundbar rear speaker. If you're looking to spice up your relationship with your ARC, this is the toy to make it happen. The majority of those that are interested in a soundbar would hear this setup and be quite positive about it. It's in this exclusive group for a reason. But for better or worse, the 300s often dominate the sound, unless you turn them way down and that's no fun. Otherwise, they drive the cinematic experience in a way that no other surrounds do. So whenever I listen, I get this nagging sense, not that the sound is flawed per se, but that these rears are really not meant for the ARC or Beam Gen 2. Rather, they belong to the soundbar that Sonos might offer next. And perhaps they're not even necessarily meant to be used exclusively with a soundbar. So my take is, if you are buying all of this anew, you are investing in an awkward generational mismatch where there is a fresher, more open future for the Aero 300s and a far more stale future for the ARC. Anyway, I have more fun with the directional 3D content with the ARC and 300s than the Dragon, and even the HTA9 at times, if we're talking rear effects. Even though the ARC bar sound alone does not put up much of a fight compared to the Dragon's main unit, the ERA 300s make up for the ARC's 3D audio limitations. There's more. The ERA 300s relative to the Dragon surrounds bring a bit more low end and I sense do a slightly better job of extending bass resonances right next to your ear, bringing more energy and ramp up to the booms. The rear soundstage also feels wider, which could have something to do with the unorthodox 180 degree angle of the two horizontal channels. So let's ground these observations in one of my favorite opening scenes, Blade Runner 2049. As I mentioned in my Dragon review, that first boom provided a very clear indication that the Dragon brings a higher level of intensity. Not just volume, but sound completeness that I had not yet heard from a soundbar system. A similar sensation with the opening eye. Intensity and detail to the point of vulnerability, or whatever this move my kid does. The A9 shines in terms of framing the space and boundaries of the newly revealed dystopian landscape making the audio world sound as grand as the visual world. One of my favorite sound effects is the electronic engine of K's hovercraft as it travels overhead from behind. The ERA 300s do the best job of energizing that sound and giving the craft a convincing back to front directional effect. The A9 and the Dragon also handles this well, but the 300s give it a bit more oomph in the back. The dragon delivers the most menace and intensity through the occasional booms, the sparse orchestration, and various other sound accents on the journey to Sapper Morton's slimy farm thing. The 300s and A9 offer the most convincing upward left to right directional effects during the landing scene, along with right to left wind noises that immediately follow as Kay enters the home. The A9 and Dragon shine as K walks through the house. The A9 most convincingly recreating the space and atmosphere of the home, and the Dragon delivering the richest atmospherics, in particular, the boiling pot. I give the rest of the sequence to the Dragon, offering up the richest dialogue, the most satisfying crunchy wall sounds and punches, culminating in the guttural gunshot that leads to the collapsing body hitting the floor. Music, general advice. Per usual, the most coherent 
full surround sound will be Atmos tracks, as it was mixed with a front and rear setup in mind. And the data transfer is likely going to be higher than Bluetooth or even AirPlay. Also, if you set rear levels a little higher for cinema, you will want to reduce the volume for music, especially if playing a surround sound upmix. Otherwise, the same kind of points I've made previously still applies, with the Dragon delivering the richest sound, and the Q990C, well, something less than the Dragon. Sonos, you got your business in the front, party in the back situation with the 300s. I have to say, I have still yet to find a track before, let's say, 2000 that I think sounds really good on the A9. I just really think it's meant for modern music mixing. The 90s and preceding decades just often sound out of place. The thinner mids really show. Also, in general, older tracks across all systems, let's say Beatles, Zeppelin, Paul Simon, Huey Lewis and the News, tend to sound a bit out of place when the source is PCM stereo, not Atmos, yet still upmixed to all channels. It's more likely to sound a little wonky. Do your best to get an Atmos source, or be prepared to make it more stereo-like if it's not quite fitting in. This is easiest with the Dragon and Q990C as there are music channel modes to support that. With the Arc, you can turn off the surrounds or have the rear speakers play as stereo. Closing thoughts, what to buy, the Nakamichi Dragon. I think there is a narrow case for this system, at least this early in the game, where we don't yet fully understand the durability, along with the exorbitant price. But overall, it offers the most capable soundbar system sound, and the best is rarely affordable. The Q990C is the sanest choice if sanity was an equation and performance and cost were inputs. If you were leaning Q990C, I would keep leaning in that direction. The Sonos system, I wouldn't buy it, at least the ARC. Upgraded soundbar is rumored for 24, which I think is the true match for the Aero 300s. I'm hoping it brings some balance to the force. If you already own the ARC and are hard set on the 300s experience, you should buy them. I think you'll have a lot of fun and there will be more and more ways to repurpose them if you want to divorce them from the ARC at a later date. Again, I'd watch my previous video if you're interested in the speculation. The A9 plus SW5. If wide separation up front and precision and 3D effects tops your must have list, this may be your system, assuming you can tolerate leaner lower mids and bass. I own all four and I'll be sticking with the dragon for now. Next up, because at least three people have asked loudly, I'll put my illegal Sonos setup against the dragon and answer if grouping a 300 stereo pair up front and adding a sub to the Sonos setup we have here conquers the dragon. What this next video is meant to do is not so much convince you to buy the illegal setup, but to help us get a sense if Sonos were to officially support more Era 300s up front, might the dragon get a little indigestion? All right, thanks for watching. I'll admit more of you smashed the subscribe button this year than I would have guessed, dang near doubling my count. So this is what being pretty feels like. If you're new to the channel, you don't need to subscribe. Thanks for showing up. Maybe throw me an up thumb if you're feeling generous. I'm talking to those that have been creeping around for a good long while now and have not yet committed. It's time to join the club and help me get to my 25,000 sub goal before the end of the year. Wrapping this up, catch you on the next one.